Hello, uh, my name is Les Lawrence and you're on my uh, YouTube teaching channel. It's my new channel uh, where I'm going to be posting uh, short teachings, PowerPoints, and, and uh, things that uh, I believe the Lord wants us to know. Um, I also love to start with my beautiful picture of the Sea of Galilee here. Uh, but I also want to show you uh, how you can get on my blog. If you go on your browser and go to YouTube, um, go, go to YouTube and then search just put my name in there, Les Lawrence, and you'll see different, there's other Les Lawrence's, but make sure you click on the one that's my own picture. Uh, when you cl click on my picture there, uh, it'll take you to, uh, whoop, there we go, take you to my, no, I'm doing something different, sorry, I got messed up. <laughs> there, take you to my, uh, my new channel, and uh, on there you'll see various teachings I've done in the past. So I just encourage you to to do that, and also when you're there, please subscribe. Uh, all right, let's get into the teaching. I don't, don't want to take, waste a lot of time. I pray that the Lord will give us some real understanding from the Word. I'm talking about timing uh, today, that timing is everything. And uh, I, I need for you to understand something, and I'll be given several scriptures about this. Uh, but uh, let's start with, with the fact that uh, the question is, why was Jesus born? We we understand a lot of the teaching about it, but in the general sense, the main, the big picture of why Jesus was born was he was born to die, right? It was his, God's purpose, and not only God's purpose, but the timing of Jesus coming as a little baby, the way he came, uh, then his life, his miracles, his discipling of these men, and then his death, burial, and resurrection. All of that was in a certain timing of God, and we'll talk about that, and I'll illustrate that clearly in a second. Uh, now, understanding timing in the Bible, if you do, you'll find a key to unlock prophecy. Many mistakes are made in prophetic analysis by missing the timing of events. Here's a great example of that from Psalm 102. Psalm 102 I call the Holocaust Psalm. Just read it. Read the first ten verses. It's a graphic description of the Holocaust. And it's my position that before the Holocaust in the, in the 1940s, before that in history, when you would read Psalm 102, you would read it sort of as a general promise, a, a generic promise that the afflicted can cry out to God and he'll hear their prayers. But after the Holocaust and, and it became understood what happened there, you'll see that this psalm is not only a generic promise to the afflicted, but a specific promise related to the Holocaust and timing. Because after describing the Holocaust, it goes on in verse 13 and says, Now the time to favor Zion has come. Yes, the set time. So it speaks of a set time to favor Zion, which was only after the Holocaust. Because from 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, until the Holocaust, Israel never won a war. But after 1948 until the present, Israel has never lost a war. So there's a major change of timing in God. Israel was under judgment for 2,000 years, and then he turned from judgment to favor. Now we're seeing Israel in favor, in restoration, in blessing. God is with them, and, and we're in a whole different prophetic time uh, according to the Bible. So, uh, so timing, that's a great example of of how we need to read the Bible and understand the timing that's being spoken of. Now, uh, here's another key verse from Acts 3, uh, starting at verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins be blotted out, so that times of refreshing, times of refreshing, may come from the presence of the Lord. By the way, uh, the times of refreshing uh, come from the presence of the Lord. It's the Lord's presence with us that brings the refreshing. It's not just that there. It's not just that he pours out refreshing from heaven, but when he's with us, when we're in a relational uh, basis with, with Jehovah God and with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, then we're refreshed. Hallelujah. So refreshing, that times of refreshing may come. After we repent, our sins are blotted out. Then there are times of refreshing. That's timing. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive, or in other words, retain, Jesus has to stay in heaven, look at this underlying part, until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken 
by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So the timing of Jesus' second coming is actually, uh, a, again, a timing issue. It's not just random. God has a plan. Now, here's another verse, Acts 17, 26. He made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. I like to say that God is not a globalist. He's a nationalist. He actually has nations with boundaries and actually the timing for those nations to exist. You know, where's the Greek Empire? Where's the Persian Empire? Where's the Babylonian? Roman empires. They're all gone because their time is up. We are now in the timing of God's restoration of Israel. Hallelujah. So truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, Ephesians 1, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Again, the fullness of times. So I'm just I'm drawing your attention to the timing of Scripture and God's promises are connected at times. First uh, Timothy 4, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. That's a timing thing. First Peter 1, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So even in all of history of 6,000 years of biblical history, the, the last 2,000 years are considered the last times. The first 4,000 years uh, and then the last 2,000 are the last times. And we're in the very last of the last times at the end of that. And of course, the 6,000 years to six, uh, a, a day is as a thousand years with the Lord. And you can sit, think of that as six days and the seventh day is the, the reign of Jesus and so forth. Well, uh, now let's get a little more specific and just look at Jesus for a minute. Look at this. His hour had not come. This is a phrase you see several times in the Gospels. And have you ever considered the times the crowds tried to kill Jesus that failed? The reason they wanted to kill him was usually for blasphemy because they perceived that he was claiming to be God, which he was. Uh, but there's at least seven times in the Gospels, other times than the crucifixion, where they tried to kill Jesus. Let's look at a few of those verses. John 7, they sought to take him. But no man laid hands because his hour was not yet come. Uh, John 7, 44, a few verses later. Some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Uh, John 8, these words spoke Jesus in the treasure as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. They, uh, John 8, 59, they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. They actually had stones to kill him, and... They were not able to because it wasn't the timing for his death. Here's another one, John 10. They took up stones again to stone him. Uh, John 10, 39. They sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. Uh, another one, this, was, this one is really, really cool. This is from Luke 4, and it's, it's in, the, this one takes place at Nazareth where he was raised. And outside of Nazareth, there's this great cliff. Uh, I've been there. I've stood there. And it's about a 1,500-foot sheer drop from the top of this cliff. And it says, All those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust them out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then, passing through the midst of them, he went his way. That's a miracle. That was a supernatural thing. They, they were th going to throw him over the cliff, and he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Well, here's a picture that we took in 2015 on an Israel tour. Um, this is our good friends Doug and Leslie Walton uh, standing on top of this hill. And you can see. Now, if you took a few steps behind them, it literally is a sheer drop down to the, to the valley that you can see. That's the Jezreel Valley. And you're looking south. On the other side is actually Mount Carmel and uh, where where Elijah had the battle with the prophets of Baal and so forth. And the Jezreel Valley is where the battle of Armageddon is going to be fought. Mount Megiddo is that valley in, in this side over here, uh, which is where you get the name Armageddon. Har Megiddo is Armageddon. And uh, so you stamp, Jesus was raised in Nazareth, and he would have been able to go to this, this cliff anytime he wanted to as a boy and, and look down and see where the final battles would take place in history. 
what an amazing thing just to see that. But but there you see a picture of what it is standing uh, on top of that uh, that promen promontory there, and right in Nazareth. It's the only cliff in the Nazareth area that's so severe. So that's what they were talking about. Well, then uh, later on, Jesus is talking uh, and says to them, uh, the hour has come. Now, remember, it says his hour had not come. His hour had not come. It wasn't the right timing. But now he says to his disciples, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. So there was a timing here. And he says, now as he's praying in the garden, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? In other words, he's saying, should I pray that God would save me from this hour? But for this purpose, for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. What an amazing, amazing tr trial that was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was literally struggling. He did ask the Father three times that that cup of suffering could pass from him. But each time he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I call that the hinge of history, that with his death and resurrection. But he actually said, my soul is troubled. In other words, in his, in his self, in his own will, he's troubled. That's why he had to say, not my will, but your will. That's how you defeat that soul temptation, that selfish temptation, by saying, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. So Jesus had to face that. He had to deal with it. But notice the timing words that it's, it, that it's actually an hour. All the hours of his life, many times they would have killed him before, but it wasn't time. It wasn't the right setting, the right timing. And in fact, it comes down to the actual hour where he's uh, actually giving up his life to, to obey the Father. For 2 Corinthians 6 says, For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. This is a promise to us. This is a promise to us. And this is where I want to end up today. Indeed, the right time for us to connect to God, Jehovah God, the God of Israel, is right now. At any time, on the day of salvation. What is the day of salvation? That's our choice to choose to accept Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. So this is a good salvation message but it also gives you an understanding of how to read the Bible and notice the timing words. That there are hours, there are days, there are times. There are even entire periods of time. The times of the end turns out to be 2,000 years uh, of history. This whole time period, because, because after the Jews rejected Jesus and, and he was crucified and, and God judged them for 2,000 years, they scattered around the world, but then after that, at the very end, he says, it's time now to come back. The Holocaust was a, a signal moment of time. Now is the time to favor Zion. And we're now seeing that in the 72 years since then. Israel's celebrating their 72nd anniversary this week, starting Tuesday at sundown. And we rejoice that God is blessing and favoring Israel. And I pray that if, if you happen to be watching this and don't know Jesus, that today is the day of salvation. You can make your timing start right now. Let this be the first day of the rest of your life to follow Jesus and to worship God, uh, Jehovah God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray that this word, this teaching would, would be, uh, your Holy Spirit would witness in the hearts of the listeners and the viewers that they could receive it, receive you and follow you as we commit ourselves to be on uh, on the right side of history, on God's side of history. Thank you, Father God. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we thank you, Father. I pray for every listener. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come on back next time. Bye-bye.